Today, we're going to be doing an unboxing for Black Panther, the early years omnibus. And if this is your first time viewing, my name is Dominic, and you're watching The Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. Now let's go ahead and dive into that Black Panther unboxing. Okay, and here's my box that I will be doing the unboxing from. And today I mixed it up a little bit. I actually got this book from CheapGraphicNovels.com. I have ordered from them in the past and have always been satisfied by their shipping job. No real complaints, and it doesn't look like this is going to be any different. Now, admittedly, I'm not a gigantic Black Panther reader. However, he's been a character I've wanted to learn more and more about. And now as we take a quick look at that omnibus, I just want to mention that I did purchase the direct market cover. I will include a picture of the standard edition cover that you could find everywhere. I just want to give you a good idea of the different covers you can get for this omnibus. When I go to show the spine as well, I think the standard edition has a little different picture in the corner. I don't have a picture of what that looks like, but just be aware the dust jackets are different. And as I do with other omnibuses, when I first get them out, I'm going to go ahead and stretch the spine, try to separate the pages out, just to kind of break in the book. I've heard this helps. I'm not sure, but it's a great little exercise, and it seems to do something. And while I do that, if you enjoyed collected edition contents like this or reviews, please go ahead and consider subscribing to my channel. I do weekly releases, a couple different videos a week, and I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Okay, and now let's take a closer look at the actual cover of the dust jacket. This is a reproduction of one of the issues inside the actual collection itself, and it's a really sharp cover. I definitely enjoy what we're seeing here. As we go ahead and transition to the spine view, I will say you'll see a little picture window at the very bottom of this omnibus spine. This is the one I believe will have a little bit of a different image in the standard edition cover as well. And then as we transition to the back of the book, you can see the issues included in this omnibus, as well as the contents, the MSRP value, things like that. I do want to note as well that this is a 912 page book. It is an oversized hardcover format with nice glossy print pages, as you can expect in almost every other Marvel omnibus. And now I'll take a moment just to give you a look at the dust jacket again, and then the under the dust jacket artwork. As far as the under the dust jacket actual book art, it is very similar to the Silver Age omnibuses where you have the kind of logo of the book. Pretty bland other than that. The back also has a cool picture of the Black Panther. Very cool, other than that little sticky piece of cardboard or something I had to pull off mine. Otherwise, really great under the dust jacket art, no complaints here, a very solidly made omnibus. Okay, and now as we transition into the collection proper, a couple other notes about the collection. I will say it's a sewn binding, and you'll be able to see what the gutters and things look like as we go across the book itself. I do also want to just mention what this omnibus includes. The Black Panther Early Years Omnibus collects the Fantastic Four issues 52, 53, 56, and 119. Tales of Suspense issues 97 through 99. Captain America, issue 100. The Avengers, issue 52, 62, 73, 74, 77 through 79, 87, 112, and 126. Along with Daredevil, issue 52, 69, and Annual 4. Astonishing Tales, issue 6 through 7. Marvel Team Up, issue 20. Jungle Action, issue 6 through 24 and material from the Fantastic Four 54. So as you can hear from its contents, this is a pretty eclectic book. The reason for that is because Black Panther didn't have his own titled series for some time. In fact, this omnibus doesn't collect anything that's, you know, Black Panther issue 1 or anything like that. No, what it includes instead are all of the early appearances of Black Panther, beginning with his first appearance in Fantastic Four. Yes, that's right. He first appeared in an issue of the Fantastic Four. In fact, the Fantastic Four for those that maybe don't know, they introduced a lot of Marvel favorites, heroes and villains, into the world of Marvel comics, including, yep, the Black Panther. 
So this omnibus includes all the early issues that he showed up in Fantastic Four. Of course, we have him in Captain America, Daredevil, and several appearances of the Avengers, where he kind of teams up with, yes, Earth's mightiest heroes, the Avengers. After some time bouncing around in a lot of the comics like this, Black Panther finally features in the series Jungle Action. So while this wasn't a Black Panther comic, he was the main star of this comic book, beginning in issue 6. Now again, I'm not a huge Black Panther reader, but after discovering him, admittedly in the movies and some of the bigger Marvel comic crossover events, maybe some appearances in other comics or appearances in comics that I already read that he just features in, I've actually been much more interested in this character on the whole. Since then, I've read a little bit of Christopher Priest runs, Tahanisi Coates' run on Black Panther. I've just kind of dabbled a few issues here and there to kind of get a sense for this character. I've also read some of his early appearances, particularly his introduction in Fantastic Four. More as a Fantastic Four fan, even more than a Black Panther fan, though I did appreciate the issue. I'm really excited to read this omnibus, as most of its contents I've never read before. I think I'm particularly interested in the Avengers issues. I love early Avengers stuff that I've read. Again, I'm not an extensive reader of that either, but what I've read, it's been a ton of fun, and I think that he would be a great addition to that team, and I'm excited to read those early appearances. However, I think the real draw for this omnibus for many people, including myself, are the issues of jungle action that Black Panther stars in. I've heard it said, and though I can't testify a ton firsthand, having only read the first jungle action issue he's showcased in, issue 6, I've heard that that is really where it kicks into high gear. We notice a big tonal shift. And they do a lot to kind of enrich his origin, history, background. And so I've heard that the jungle action issues are really the selling point for this early year's omnibus. And I'll admit that that was my major draw in picking this up. And even just reading issue 6, I can already tell you it is a cut above some of these other issues in the early year's omnibus. Unlike some other comic book collections I feature on my channel, I will say that this omnibus appears to be a great starting point for new readers, or those that, like myself, want to dabble in the Black Panther and want to see where he came from. I think that overall it is very new reader friendly, as some of the issues go all the way back to the Silver Age. There is a bit of hand-holding, and it gives you enough exposition to really try to figure out who this guy is, where he comes from, and it fills in the gaps that you need for the greater Marvel context or other characters featured in the issues. But like I said, to my knowledge, this collects every early appearance of Black Panther, so you don't miss a beat of all of his early interactions. I think that I love that this is new reader friendly, and I think for someone like myself who largely knows the Black Panther from even the movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this can be a fun place to jump in. I will caution those that only prefer modern comic books that the first half of this omnibus may take a bit to get through as it has some silver age and early bronze age issues so the issues are a little bit more wordy a little bit slower moving and they feel a bit dated while i can't attest to all of the jungle action issues either what i have read of those they definitely appear to be a little bit more gripping while they still feel dated themselves i think they'll be an easier entry point for modern comic readers but I just want to say, modern readers only, beware, some of these issues are a bit dated, but I think there's something here for just about everyone. There's also some incredible talent attached to this book. Creators like Stan Lee, Roy Thomas, Don McGregor, Jack Kirby, John Bushima, Rich Buckler, and Billy Graham. I mean, these are some heavy hitters in Marvel history and comic book history altogether. And to see their writing and art showcased throughout this over 900 page volume is a real treat. I think because the creators do change hands a little bit throughout the volume itself, you also get a nice sense of variety with this old early years omnibus. In addition to the issues themselves, there's a couple forewords, an afterword, things like that. The afterword is actually provided by Dwayne McDuffie, who is an iconic pioneer for comics history as well. I really liked his afterword, absolutely. It was a very cool little essay there. I won't spoil the details for those that want to read it for themselves, but it's a great addition to this comic. There's also some extras at the back of this book that you'll see once I arrive, but overall, like I said, this is a very well-made omnibus. 
I do think it's interesting that it's not considered a volume one. That does make me a little bit hesitant on what the future of this line of Black Panther omnibuses will be. I know that Black Panther is finally getting a lot of love with the first Christopher Priest collection coming out, the Tahanisi Coates omnibus coming out, a World of Wakanda omnibus coming out, and of course this one. There's been a richness of Black Panther omnibus content. But for people like me that like to collect it all, I am curious to see if there's any kind of volume 2 that would follow this early years omnibus. As a fan of the movies, I was encouraged to see some characters I recognized from on screen. Obviously, we had T'Challa, but seeing characters like Eric Killmonger or M'Baku, which was the man-ape, some of these appearances were surprising but really well-received for me. Like I said, a lot of my knowledge from Black Panther comes from the movies, so to see familiar faces and characters, even in different incarnations, was a real treat as I skimmed through this omnibus and read a couple issues here and there. Black Panther, frankly, was not a character I was overwhelmingly aware of growing up. I don't think he was a character my dad collected, and I know I'd learned a lot of comic stuff from my dad. Uh, so Black Panther, when I really started to learn about him, was right before that first movie came out. I'll be completely honest with you guys. But the more I learned about that character and the history, the more intrigued I was. It was very cool to learn about a superhero of color in a you know medium that was largely well, not very diverse for its mainstream superheroes. To have a character who was noble and a king, but also a fierce warrior, Black Panther really brought a lot to the table, and I'm really happy that he's finally getting his due in the form of all of these omnibus and mainstream big hit blockbuster films. Going back to that art again, even just as I'm flipping through this collection, I'm just completely mind blown with how beautiful some of this silver and early Bronze Age art is. While I'm obviously a fan of modern comic book art as well, I do think that there's something to be said about these eras in comic book history. I think when I imagine comic book art, this is really the kind of dominant art I think about. Like I said, this book even includes art by Jack Kirby himself, the king of the Silver Age in my opinion as far as comic book art. What a stunning collection. I also didn't mention this as well. One of the reasons I purchased this from CheapGraphicNovels.com was because this year for Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, I saw this on sale for $29.99, and this omnibus just came out maybe a month or two before the time of this recording. So to find a book under $30 blew my mind. And while I was already kind of considering picking up this book, when I saw it drop that low on sale, this was a no-brainer to me. I'm so happy I was able to pick it up for that price point. Because even if I don't finish this right away, I feel like I'm already getting such value out of it, even just reading a few issues this past week or so. As a personal note, that actually is why I ended up with this direct market cover. I did prefer that standard edition cover that had the Black Panther kind of peering out from the forest. I think that that cover looked a bit more striking. Not that I don't love the comic book reprint covers, uh, but that was the reason I ended up with the direct market. Because even on cheap graphic novels when they had their Black Friday deal, I think the standard cover was still like 50 or 60 bucks. But for some reason, this edition was $29.99. So I swooped on it and I never looked back. We just saw that end page after the last issue as well. It matches the art we see on the back of this collection itself under the dust jacket that I showed earlier. I love that it uses that to separate out some of the pages when they want the layouts to match up right. Little features like that I really just enjoy in these omnibus collections. I really think Marvel makes a really great product. I know sometimes people complain that the page thickness in these omnibuses is shrinking rapidly, and I see what they mean. Having bought older omnibus editions, the paper stock is not as thick as it once was, though I will say that this Black Panther edition doesn't seem too bad. I'm not noticing a ton of page bleed through. Of course, there is some, but it's not terrible. Overall, pretty satisfied with it, and I really just enjoy these Marvel omnibuses. And wow, you can just definitely see the shift once we hit those jungle action issues. The Black Panther, it just looks more sophisticated. There's definitely some more modern touches as far as the panel layout and art design. Just stylistically, you can feel it's more modern and bring something else to the table compared to some of the early Silver Age stuff we get at the beginning of this omnibus. 
I think overall just the breadth of time this single book covers is pretty striking. I love how they collected this and I think you get a lot of bang for your buck regardless of how much you pay for it because you have so much included throughout Black Panther's early history. For those listening as well, I'd be really curious to know, are you Black Panther fans? If so, what Black Panther runs could you recommend in the comments below? As I've said a few times throughout this video, I am a newer Black Panther reader. This is some of the first stuff I've read from him, other than a few issues from Tahanisi's Coates run and Christopher Priest's run, and again, a couple odds and ends appearances here and there. But in your opinion, what do you think are some of the best runs or best places to start or maybe even single issues that you would recommend for someone just trying to get into the world of Black Panther comics. Additionally, let me know if you're interested in a full review of this omnibus after I finish. I'd love to get that kind of feedback to know what I can possibly provide in the future on this channel. Yeah, wow, I just can't take my eyes off this art. I feel like even as I'm trying to record this, every couple thoughts I have are just how strikingly beautiful the art direction is throughout this book. I love that we get a lot of Silver Age art, but I love this kind of Bronze Age era art. Just striking. I definitely think that this is one to have on the bookshelf for a long time. And here it is, like I mentioned earlier, all the extras at the back. We got some written stuff, we got some sketches, we got some other bonus features or reproduced art or covers throughout here. I just really love seeing stuff like this at the back of the omnibuses. It's just special features, it's bonus content, and I love seeing it all. And with that, we've made our way through this Black Panther's Early Years Omnibus from Marvel Comics. Again, what a great deal and what a great book. I'm so happy Marvel is giving more of a spotlight to this incredible character, and I look forward to reading more. On your way out, please don't forget to give a like. I'd love to hear from you in the comments, and if you're not yet, go ahead and feel free to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Thank you so much for watching, and feel free to watch some of my other videos. Have a good one.